Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and in this video we'll see how do you install Anaconda. Now one of the reasons why Python got so famous, in fact we have two reasons. The first one is it is damn easy to work with and second Python provides so many libraries for different type of work we have. So let's say if you want to work with machine learning, we have different libraries. If you want to work with GUI, we have different libraries. Now the question is, if you want to work with these libraries or packages, will you get all the packages by default? Now that's one issue. Let's say if you are working with PyCharm, which is one of the favorite IDE for everyone. If you want to work with, let's say NumPy or Panda, you need to install them by yourself. You have to go to marketplace, you have to install them. What if you need something where you will get all the libraries which are required and maybe even if you need some extra, you can get it very easily. And that's where Anaconda comes into picture. So what we'll do, we'll search for Anaconda here. And if you search for Anaconda, of course, you will get a lot of Anaconda images, but let's click on the first one. This is the official website of Anaconda, which says, you know, okay, they are promoting something here, but let's click on, this is what it says, the most popular Python data science platform. Okay, so when I say data science is not just for data science, we can use it for other purposes as well, but it is popular for data science. Uh, if you click on what is Anaconda here, you can see it says it's a Python distribution. That's very important, okay? It's the fastest way to get Python and R, okay? Not just Python, but then it also provides you R and it is available in all the platforms. The amazing thing is if you don't have Python in your machine, that's fine. You can simply install Anaconda. It will give you Python. It will also give you some amazing features, right? Which provides you Jupyter Notebook. Again, we'll see how to use Jupyter Notebook in the next video, but it provides you Jupyter Notebook. It provides you Spider, which is one of the ID available. In fact, Anaconda has tie up with Microsoft. So they suggest you to also use Visual Studio Code with Python. So again, we'll see that how it configures. Okay, so there are different versions available. We have Anaconda Python, we have Anaconda Enterprise, since we don't want to do much stuff enterprise let's click on download here it will download anaconda for you if you click on this download now the only problem is it is damn heavy okay the thing is we can use python for with uh, sublime as editor we can use pycharm we can use anaconda id is available since anaconda provides you so many things it's a bit heavy so it's around i'm waiting for the download for, okay so it's asking me for uh, python 3.7 or 2.7 we will go for the new version and I want to go for 64 bit and you can see it says 633 MB. Okay, that's huge. So let's click on this. It will ask you for email ID and then roll. As of now, I don't want to reveal anything there. Click on this and you can see it will download Anaconda for you. It's just that it is 600, almost more than 600 MB. The amazing thing is I have already downloaded in my machine, so will not wait anymore. So I will click on this. We already have a setup here. And now you just need to double click it. And the thing is I have already installed Anaconda in my machine. So I, I don't know what steps it will skip. So I will click on next and I agree. I guess the same steps are there. Click on next. Nothing much to specify. Of course, you can change your location where you want to install. The only thing is remember this thing, it will consume almost three GB of your C drive. So make sure that you have some space in your machine. Click on next. Okay. The, the thing is it says I already have Anaconda on my machine on at this location. Time being, I will say Anaconda 3 new so that I will get some new location. Click on next. And then it says register Anaconda as the default Python 3.7. Yes, let's do that. Uh, the only thing is in my machine, I already have that setup. So I will click on OK, click on install. By default for you, it will be checked. Click on install and it will take some time. Okay, it takes around 10 minutes to install. Uh, it's just that in my machine, I already have a setup so it may skip some steps. But for your machine, if it is doing for the first time, it will take around 10, 12 minutes, depending upon your machine speed, depending upon your internet speed. I don't know if it is uses internet at that point. So I will be skipping some part in the video. So the machine which I'm working now is an i5 7 generation machine. Still, it is working so slow. So maybe if your machine is very damn slow, it will take a lot of time. Okay, so again, it is taking a lot of time. The amazing thing is I've already installed Anaconda in my machine, right? So it's there. Now, when you install this, when you complete, it will say finish. You can simply click on finish. Your job will be done. And then you can simply go to your start menu and search for Anaconda. So you can see it will show you Anaconda prompt. We also have a navigator. I'll open this navigator. Okay, so this is the Anaconda navigator, which we got. Okay, don't show me again. And you can see this is a Jupyter notebook, which you have. You can also install VS code. As I mentioned, you know, Anaconda promotes uh, VS code. You can use that. Otherwise, we can also use Spider here. You can see we have a launch option there. So it provides you all those features. In fact, you can open this from this way or you can search for Anaconda prompt. You can also do that from command line. Example, let's say if I want to run Python now. So I can simply type Python here and you can see we got Python prompt. Just to verify if it is working, you can simply say print and you can say 
hello world and you can say enter it works right so python is working now if i want to go out i can simply say control z and in fact you can exit also works but now i will say let's say i don't want to work with python directly i don't want to use command line i want to use jupyter or maybe i want to use spider first how do we do that so you can see spider actually stands for scientific python development environment okay so when i heard about spider for the first time i thought what a fancy name but then later when i saw the full form of it that makes sense now so the scientific python development environment and you can simply click on launch here it will launch spider for you otherwise you can also use command line so you can say spider enter it will open spider for you uh yes it takes time if you open it for the first time okay this code was, will not be there for you i have since i have done this before it is giving me the code but it will ask you you can simply write a code here so you can say print hello world and it this should work of course you can write complex code as well but just to keep it simple i'm saying hello world may not be the font may not be visible to you so i can simply say control plus it will increase the font size and simply click on run and you can see this is a console which will give you the output so this is how we can use spider you can write complex code again whatever thing we have done in the course can be done on spider as well Maybe you need to install some extra packages if required, but everything will be available. Click on this and that's how Spider works. You can simply come back to the console. Okay. Now, once you have done that, you can also use Jupyter Notebook. Again, we'll see in detail how to use Jupyter Notebook and why it is so famous. But just to give you a glimpse how exactly it looks like, I can also click on this one. Let's This time, let's go for GUI. Anyway, everyone is a big fan of GUI, right? Now this is how your Jupyter will look like. Of course, you can select the notebook. This is your Jupyter notebook. Now I know you don't know how exactly everything looks here or how everything works here. We'll see that later in detail how to use Jupyter. But time being just to print one thing, I will simply add two numbers. I can say two plus three, click on run, you got the output, right? So you can run your normal code as well. But of course, Jupyter Notebook has some extra features, which we'll see in the next video. So that's it. That's about how we use Anaconda. We have some more features here. Uh, you can get some extra packages. You can just install them. Maybe I will try to make a separate video on how to do that. We also have a concept of Conda here, which is a package manager, basically. We can use that as well, but that's a separate part. But this is how we install Anaconda. This is how we open the applications and see you in the next video. I hope you're enjoying the series. Let me know in the comment section and also tell me what is your experience with Anaconda or Jupyter. Why do you think a Jupyter Notebook is better than Sublime or PyCharm? So that's it. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.